Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Electrochemistry. In the previous parts, we talked about the electrode potential and how we can calculate the standard electrode potential with the help of the standard hydrogen electrode. You can only calculate the EMF of the cell and therefore under standard conditions that is when we had a solution which was one molar for every substance we calculated its standard electrode potential and then we had this table in which we have the standard electrode potentials of most of the ions or metals uh, or most of the substances which would act as the cathode or anode. And this table of electrode potentials gives us an idea to theoretically know which would act as a cathode or which would act as an anode if you have two of those substances. Having understood that, what was the, there was one little hitch here. In real life, you do not carry out processes always with unimolar concentrations. You may have solutions which have a different concentration. So what do you do about that? How do you handle such a situation? This problem was solved by a scientist called Nernst and he gave his equation which was known as the Nernst equation. So the Nernst equation is nothing but a little correction or a little uh, subtraction that is added to the standard electrode potentials uh, in that equation in order to get the value of electrode potential when the concentration is not one. So let us study about the Nernst equation now. Let us say that there is a reaction that occurs at an electrode where the reduction of a metal ion is taking place. For example, the metal ion is M, the metal is M and the charge is N positive. A metal M with charge N positive, so the it is the ion of the metal, it gains the N positive N number of electrons and therefore it becomes neutral and a solid. So what has occurred? reduction of this metal ion has occurred and it has turned into the neutral metallic atom and if you remember you calculate the electrode potential of this by making using the standard electrode potential by using the standard hydrogen electrode and then using this uh, this solution or this metallic ion solution in one mole or one molar solution of this and then kept finding out its electrode potential because the SHE or the standard hydrogen electrode potential is zero. So you can calculate the electrode potential, the standard electrode potential by comparing it with the standard hydrogen electrode. So that we do and by doing that the value that you get is E naught M N positive upon M which shows the reduction potential of the standard reduction potential of that metal M. Now Nernst he said that if we want to find out the EMF of a cell whose concentration is not one molar or the conditions are not standard then you would subtract this by RT upon NF log into M that is concentration of the metal M divided by the concentration of the uh, ion M N positive right or both the oxidized and the, the concentrations of the oxidized and the reduced forms of the metal. Now this part which has been added would lead to the formation of the or would lead to the uh, formation of the Nernst equation. So this factor that Nernst added or this particular part of the equation which was subtracted in order to give us the electrode potential of that metal not under standard conditions but with a concentration which was not equal to one mole per liter. Now if we look at this the concentration of the solid metal M we know concentrations of solids and liquids is always taken as one. Any pure solid or pure liquid, the concentration of a pure solid and a pure liquid would be one. Therefore, this part actually becomes equal to one. So this can be written again by the electrode potential or the reduction potential of the metal M would be equal to its standard electrode potential minus RT upon NF ln 1 upon mn positive or the concentration of mn positive and this becomes 1. Now what is r here? r here is the gas constant. What is n? n is the number of electrons that have been transferred in this process. The number of electrons that have been gained in this case since we are talking of reduction potential. So the number of electrons transferred in the reaction, that is N. F 
is known as the Faraday's constant and the value of Faraday's constant is 96487 Celsius per mole. So 96487 Celsius per mole and Ln 1 upon the concentration of the metallic ion. Now having understood this, let us take an example. For Daniel cell, we know we have the copper cathode and the zinc anode. So let us put this correction and find out the and calculate the Nernst equation. So when you add this factor for the electrode potentials, then what is the, the potential difference of a cell? Potential difference of a cell is or E cell would be equal to E right minus E left. So E, one of these is right, one of these is left. So E right minus E left will give you the electrode potential of the cell, which is not standard, which means both the solutions are not one mole per liter. So let us take the example of the Daniel cell. In the Daniel cell, the cathode is copper cathode. So the electrode potential for copper cathode would be equal to the standard electrode potential of copper cathode minus RT upon 2F ln 1 upon Cu2 positive because the ion you have here is Cu2 positive and the concentration of copper on top here would be 1 so it is just 1 upon Cu2 positive. At the same time, the anode is the zinc anode and the reduction potential of the zinc anode would be E, that is reduction potential of zinc anode would be equal to the standard reduction potential of zinc minus RT upon 2F by my saying 2 because in order to get converted from 2 positive to 0, the number of electrons transferred should be equal to 2. So RT upon 2F, LN 1 upon Zn 2 positive. So you could also say that N positive or N here stands for the charge on this particular ion. Now we are calculating the electrode potential of one particular uh, metal in its oxidized and reduced form. So what would the E cell be from this? How would you calculate E cell is E right minus E left. If you do not understand what I am saying, I would encourage you to watch the previous two videos. Then you would know how you calculate the electrode potential of the or uh, the electrode uh, potential of the entire cell or the EMF of the cell or the potential difference of the cell. So E cell would be E, the right hand side that is the cathode is copper cathode minus E left which is the, the zinc anode. So E Cu2 positive upon Cu. Now do you see we are not using the standard electrode potentials. We are using the electrode potentials not under standard conditions or under the realist in the real life how it usually is. So based on that we substitute these values. This would be so E cell would become equal to E copper E naught copper that is the standard electrode potential for copper minus RT upon NF log 1 upon whatever is the concentration of the copper ion. So if you are theoretically doing this and you have a certain concentration of a solution you can see this in the table and for whatever the concentration is you can theoretically calculate the electrode potential of that cell. So minus the E naught for zinc that is the standard electrode potential for the zinc electrode minus RT upon NF LN 1 upon Zn 2 positive. Now since I have a minus here and I, let's say I put this in a bracket this automatically becomes plus. Right? I should have put a bracket, big bracket here. Anyway, now we take the E naught E naught copper that is the standard electrode potential of copper electrode minus standard electrode potential of zinc electrode. We write these together, we just rearrange it. And then we take RT upon 2F as common. RT upon 2F is common and LN is also common actually. And LN 1 upon Cu2 positive minus LN 1 upon Zn2 positive. It is just rearrangement. And if you know what is E0 cell? E0 cell is E0 right minus E0 left. So this part becomes the E0 cell, right? So we get E cell would be equal to E0 cell minus, now the correction part, RT upon 2F LN and LN minus Zn2 positive in the denominator would come in the numerator. So you will get Zn2 positive here and in the denominator LN1 upon Cu2 positive will become Cu2 positive, LN Cu2 positive. So 
this is this, the equation that we get. And this equation would then be the Nernst equation for calculation of the EMF of a cell whose concentrations of the, meta the oxidized and the reduced forms of the cathode and anode solutions is not one mole per liter. So this becomes the Nernst equation. Now if we take log to the base 10 and substitute the values of the constants that is R, the gas constant, the Faraday's constant and we take the temperature to be 298 Kelvin and when we substitute all these values and calculate we get E cell becomes equal to E naught cell which we just calculated minus when you substitute these values you get 0 0.059 and we keep the 2 because N keeps changing with equations. So to get a generalized form we have this value which is 0 0.059 divided by N in the case of the Daniel cell, it, that N is 2, but it could be a different value for different reactions. Therefore, we prefer to keep the N down here and do not substitute it. And thus, we get a generalized form of the Nernst equation with the value of 0 0.059 log, because we now take the log to the base 10. And zinc 2 positive upon Cu 2 positive. Now, if you take another equation, let us say, in the case of Daniel cell, zinc was losing two electrons and these two electrons were gained by copper and copper Cu2 positive got reduced and turned into copper metal. Chemical reactions may have a different stoichiometry. It is not necessary that the value of N, if we consider the N to be the charge on the ion, it may be, uh, it, the value of N will vary on the left and right hand sides. Then, what do you calculate N to be? It is the charge on the ion or you would say it is the total number of electrons which are being transferred. So, if you take that as the total number of electrons being transferred according to the stoichiometry of the equation, then you have to change this concentration term also by that value. I'll give you an example. Let us now discuss such a set. You have this cell with nickel and silver. In this, the cell reaction is that you have nickel and silver ions and nickel gets oxidized to Ni2 positive and silver gets reduced to form silver. And nickel, in order to get oxidized, loses two electrons while silver, in order to get reduced, gains only one electron. Since silver gains only one electron, you need two silver atoms and therefore in the balanced chemical equation, you have two silver ions and two neutral silver atoms and nickel of course is one atom each. So when you're substituting or writing down or calculating the electron potential and substituting for the Nernst equation, you have to keep in mind the stoichiometry of the reaction also. Because after all, the number of electrons which are being transferred is N. So what is that total number of electrons? And if you remember when we did chemical equilibrium in class 11, the concentration terms have to be raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients. You remember when we calculated the equilibrium constant? We, for any reaction, to calculate the equilibrium constant, we write the concentrations of the products divided by concentrations of the reactants raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients. So when you're using such a term where you have concentrations and you're comparing concentrations and you have to keep the stoichiometry of the reaction in mind, you have to do the same here. You will have to raise the concentration term of silver by two keeping in mind the, the stoichiometric coefficient. So for Nernst equation, what would E cell be? E cell would be what it is, that is E naught cell, what the standard electrode potential for this cell, having nickel and silver ions, but the correction or the Nernst part of it is minus RT upon 2F ln Ni2 positive upon Ag2 positive where since Ni2 positive is acting as the anode and Ag positive is acting as the cathode. So the Ag positive to the power of 2 because ultimately Ag positive is only one electron and 2 to the power of 2 would make it 2 electrons. So 2 electrons lost, 2 electrons gained. And of course the number of electrons that is passed or transferred is the value of N which is 2.
So here we took a very specific example where the stoichiometry of the reaction had to be taken into mind. Let us generalize this equation now. So if we had a general equation like AA plus BB gives with a transfer of n electrons give you CC plus DD. That is A number of moles of A, B number of moles of B had a transfer of n number of electrons. So you got C number, uh, number of moles of C and D number of moles of D. Then how would you calculate the electrode potential for such a cell? So the E cell now would be equal to E naught cell minus RT upon L NF ln q now what is q if you re remember your chemical equilibrium q or qc was the reaction quotient and what was reaction quotient when we find out the equilibrium constant kc what do we do we write down the concentrations of the products raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the concentrations of reactants raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients but this is done when you have all the components at equilibrium. These are the equilibrium concentrations when the concentrations of the reactants and products have become fixed. But QC is calculated when the equilibrium has not been achieved. So it could be at any other time. When QC is equal to KC, that is when we say the equilibrium has been established. So, since we are not, we do not know whether the reaction is at equilibrium, we write it as LNQC. So, LNQC or we would say E cell is equal to E naught cell minus RT upon LF, uh, NF ln C to the power C into D to the power D, that is the concentrations of the products raised to the powers of their uh, coefficients divided by the concentrations of reactants raised to the powers of their coefficients. This might appear a little confusing that how would you know what got oxidized, what got reduced. Automatically, when you get the metal atom, in the, for example, in this case, if we took uh, Ni2 positive here and Ag to the power 2 divided by Ni, the concentration of Ni into Ag positive to the power of 2, the concentrations of Ag and Ni would be 1. So automatically you would be left with Ni2 positive divided by Ag positive to the power of 2. That would automatically you will arrive at this when you cancel out or you uh, consider the concentrations of the solid metals to be unity. So this is how you relate that equilibrium constant to the Nernst equation 2 and that would be the next topic that we would be doing but before we come to that, in the next video, I'll solve a couple of problems based on the Nernst equation. With this, I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.